Welcome to the tutorial about the interface part two. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the menus, interface navigation, preference highlights, and customizing keyboard shortcuts. So kind of a mixed bag, but all related to the interface. So let's start with the menus. There are three kinds of menus in the software. The top menu, the right click menu, and the view menu. So the top menu is located at the top of the software. All of these headings relate to a different menu. And as you may or may not have noticed, some of these menus relate to toolbars within the software. So the edit menu with the edit toolbar, the play menu with the play toolbar. And then if you open up one of these menus, you'll notice that there are far more commands and menu items than what exists in its corresponding toolbar. But if you think about it, that makes sense as toolbars are designed as a way of quickly accessing the most popular commands. Uh, next we have a few uh, menu in the top that relate to a specific view, such as the drawing view. So let's bring that up. So if you right click in the drawing view, you'll notice that the menu is very similar to the one that's in the top uh, of the software. However, for views like the camera view that doesn't have an actual heading um, in the top bar, when you right click on it, these menu items, uh, which pertain directly to actions you would do in the camera view, exist um, sort of scattered throughout different menus in the top bar here. So this sort of leads me into the third menu, which is the view menu. And it's an icon located in the top left corner of most views. So here it is in the network view, it exists in the timeline view. Um, and if you open it up, you'll notice that it varies depending on which view you're in. Um, so here we have the edit, uh, view, drawing, drawing tools, uh, menus, but we also have things like animation tools and IK constraints. If we then go into the drawing view and click on the exact same icon, we'll notice that it has similar menu items, edit, view, drawing, drawing tools, but it's missing things like the IK constraints and the animation tools. Um, this makes sense as uh, the operations that you perform in the camera view differ from those that you do in the drawing view. So that's it for the menus. Now let's talk about navigating the interface. So the most important thing to note when navigating through the interface is this thin red box that's now surrounding the camera view. We call this the focus. The focus allows the software to know which part of its interface you want to act on. For example, say you're doing something here in the timeline view, and then you look up and decide you'd like to zoom in or out of what you're seeing in the camera view. You go to your keyboard shortcuts, either command minus or command equals, um, I believe on Windows that's control minus or control equals. And you realize, hey, nothing happened here in the camera view. What's going on? Well, it's because your focus is on the timeline. So I don't know if you noticed, but you were actually zooming in and out of the timeline. So if you want to zoom in and out of the camera view, you actually have to click in it to select the camera view and put the focus there. And then you can do your, your zoom in and zoom out. Another nifty thing to know in the camera view when trying to navigate is that if you hold on the space bar, you can you know pan around uh, the inside of the camera view. This works for the drawing view as well. And then if you decide you'd like to reset any panning, zooming, or rotations that you've done in the software, you simply need to hit the keyboard shortcuts Shift M. This resets all three. Another good keyboard shortcut to know is command or control F. So when you hit command F, it takes whatever view you have the focus on and makes it about a third of the screen. So it makes it a bit larger for you to work in. Then if you hit it one more time, it makes it full screen. Then if you hit it a third time, it restores uh, the original interface at 100%. So that's pretty much it for navigating. Um, so now let's talk about the preferences. On a Mac, you can access the Preferences panel through the Harmony menu. If you're using a PC, you would do this through the Edit menu. So the Preferences panel is going to become your best friend. You can pretty much make any adjustment you want to the software through this panel. 
And it's not here so much to make um, preference choices for animating as it is for customizing the software. So here at the top, there are several different tabs. So I'm going to talk about the general tab. There are many options here that you can explore in your own time, um, but I'm just going to touch on about four options. The first one being the automatically save workspace. So let's escape out of this window for a minute. I don't know if you noticed, but when we started the tutorial, the interface looked different than it does if you had the if you have the default workspace open. Um, the camera view toolbar is present, as is the network views. Uh, the network view is visible and not hidden behind uh, the color view, which it normally is in the default workspace. So basically, the interface looks the way it did at the end of the last tutorial, even though I had shut down the software and relaunched it in that time. So basically, what this option is telling you, the automatically save workspace, is that you can leave your pen and pencil, your crayon, buy your drawing table, get up, go away, come back the next day, and have everything exactly where you left it. Um, if you don't like that and you want to come back to a clean default workspace every time you launch the software, you would just have to uncheck this option. The next thing I'm going to talk about is colors. You can edit um, pretty much all the colors that you see in the interface and you would do this by clicking on the edit colors button. At the top of this window there are several tabs each pertaining to a different view. Um, if you want to edit a color in a specific view you just have to click on a swatch. I've selected the background of the camera view which is a popular choice. A lot of people like to change it from gray or clear uh, to white. So I'm going to say that, um, say OK, and then here I'm going to hit enter which will both save and exit me out of the preferences panel. So as you can see here the camera view has now has a white background just as the drawing view. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the focus on mouse enter option. Right now by default it's unchecked. I'm going to check it here and then go back to the software. So as you see now, as I pass my mouse over all the different views, they become focused or selected without me actually having to click in the view. And this is helpful for what I showed you before with the zoom in, zoom out. Now you don't have to click here, you can just zoom in, zoom out, and then come down and do the same thing here in the timeline. And the last thing I'd like to talk about in the general tab is the levels of undo. Um, 50 is a pretty, I think, adequate number for undos, but some people like to put in a, a really big number, um, you know, to really save themselves in case uh, they have to go back. They screwed up so badly they have to go like a million times back. So they, they like to put in a really large number. Um, so you can make that change here in the level of undos. There's one thing I'd like to show you in the camera tab and that is the camera view default zoom. Um, right now when you hit the keyboard shortcut shift M your camera view resets fit to view. If you decide that you want that shift M shortcut to reset to something farther or closer or say 100% you can make that change here. And the last thing I want to talk about is something I touched on uh, in one of the first tutorials and that's changing your shortcut styles. Um, I told you earlier that when you selected the Adobe Flash workflow style that it was not set in stone. And here's the place where you would be able to, to change it to either the Toon Boom Harmony or the Toon Boom Studio style. This is also the area where you can customize your keyboard shortcuts. So let's go into the general tab and come down to where we see zoom, zoom in and out. So let's, let's select zoom in, for example. Here on my computer, it's command equals to zoom in. If I decide I don't like that, I simply have to click on the clear button here, select this field, and then enter in my new keyboard shortcut, which I'm going to make command plus, which is also command shift equals. So that's command plus. So now this is a new keyboard shortcut. It appears here as well beside the default what it was before. If, for example, I 
accidentally select a keyboard shortcut that already exists, such as Command minus, which we know is a zoom out, a, a conflict detected window will pop up, allowing me to see the command that shares the same same uh, this shortcut and will allow me to replace it or duplicate it or just cancel. Um, I'm going to cancel that because it's sort of a weird idea, I think, to duplicate two keyboard shortcuts. Um, you can always replace it though, which is you know, if you really want that keyboard shortcut that badly. So let's cancel that, and I'm just going to restore my default here. Let me skip. So that's pretty much it for um, about the interface part two. Um, stay tuned for the next tutorial, Drawing Basics.